Militant Suffragette, the story of Elizabeth Freeman. In the 1910s, it was hard being a loud woman, and it still is. Radical suffragette and civil rights worker Elizabeth Freeman was a loud woman, and she has remained largely forgotten. For such a loud woman, it's curious that no recording of her voice exists. All we have left of this charismatic woman are photographs and news articles and a silent film of her giving a speech. See, look, that's her there in the middle. Initially, there was sound. This was an Edison talkie. Even that has been lost, and all that is left now is her image. Freeman began her life in England, but was raised since the age of four in the United States at a utopian community in St. John's Lynn, New York, by a single mother. After being introduced to the Salvation Army as a teenager, Freeman felt called to a life fighting for justice, peace, and equality. When Freeman gave speeches on behalf of suffrage in London, she found she had a more attentive audience when she'd speak in an English accent. She used this malleable voice to coax, persuade, to shock, and to entertain. While marching with Emmeline Pankhurst and associates in London, Freeman was subjected to forcible feedings in prison that tore and lacerated her throat and those of her fellow suffragists. This did not stop her from speaking. In fact, her time as an orator had not yet hit its stride. Her rhetorical skills wowed the media and the crowds packed like sardines into the Metropolitan Temple in Manhattan to hear her speak. When answering whether militancy hurt the cause, Freeman replied, militancy hurt the cause, does it? You only have to read the history of the United States to answer that question. She continued, you read in the newspapers of the destruction of property in London. In Boston, they destroyed the tea. In London, we broke the windows. The headline of the article that ran in the New York Times the following morning read, She defends London window smashing. While courting the press, Freeman was tactical, provocative, and charismatic. She even courted a bear. As they traveled the country as the Pilgrim Hikers, Freeman served as General Rosalie Jones's Secretary of War. The women told all they encountered, that old line from Boston, that a suffragist is a woman with a wishbone, a suffragette is a woman with a backbone. They even called the mayor for their little yellow wagon, as it came to be called, Emmeline, after Mrs. Pankhurst. Although there is photographic evidence that Freeman indeed did wear the occasional hat, she told a journalist that she neither wore a hat nor a corset and prided herself on one-piece gowns of her own design. Said the newspaper man, she is as eager to reform women's dress as to change her political status. The tyranny of clothes, said Freeman, is one of the first shackles that women must sunder. While traveling the states as a paid speaker, Freeman spoke to a group of Black American women to promote suffrage. The women at the meeting were very frank with Freeman, questioning whether allowing women to vote would just be doubling their white oppressors. While working as a paid activist for suffrage in Dallas, Freeman found herself out of work sooner than expected. She pleaded with the ladies in Dallas to keep her on, but they insisted that they didn't have the money. Then, a cable came to Freeman's hotel in Dallas from a man from the NAACP who she had met on a train. His name was Roy Nash. According to Nash, a lynching was perpetrated in full view of the mayor and sheriff and nobody did anything about it. Nash asked Freeman to investigate the horrific event. Despite feeling a little too green, Freeman agreed to go to Waco. When Freeman arrived in Waco, it was raining. So the next morning, she set out to discover the details surrounding the murder of Jesse Washington, which happened only a few days before. She spoke with prominent members of the black and white communities there, along with hairdressers, farmers, and preachers. She approached the judge on the street and asked him questions about the case and was rebuffed. Freeman regrouped, wore a different dress, 
put on a strong English accent and pretended to be a journalist wanting to defend Waco to the Northerners. The judge then gave her the court records. When she spoke to the sheriff, he blamed everything on the judge, who claimed he was a gambler and a reprobate to boot. Nobody, it seems, was to blame, and everybody seemed to want to just forget it. Still, Freeman talked her way into receiving a treasure trove of documents related to the mob violence, including photographs by a professional photographer named Gildersleeves. Towards the end of her week in Waco, people started getting suspicious, and men on the street would whisper and refer to her as a detective. Her endeavors led to her being threatened with violence, and her hotel room was ransacked twice. So... Once she had all the interviews, documents, and photographs she needed, she packed them all in a trunk and headed down to Galveston to take a ship to Key West and then a train back to New York. After she gave the information to W.E.B. Du Bois, he wrote about what he called the Waco Horror in the NAACP publication, The Crisis. Freeman, however, was only referred to as an unnamed investigator. After her time in Texas, Freeman began a speaking tour to raise money for the NAACP. She worked for the peace movement and for labor unions and was arrested alongside Upton Sinclair. Freeman was a loud woman, provocative, strong, and largely forgotten today. By the time she died at age 65, the crowds packing her speeches were long gone. No recordings of her mesmerizing speeches exist but we can imagine what Edison's film may have sounded like. The militant attitude of mind is forced on women. Sometimes the press call us hysterics, fanatics, self-made martyrs. Of course, a martyr is self-made. He chooses to suffer for a righteous cause, and it is only for a cause that suffering like ours can be endured. The English woman did not become militant until the sword was forced upon them and all constitutional ways and means failed. 